Let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have center Brandon Yates. Questions for Brandon? Greg? So Brandon, start with just the offensive line season as a whole. What have you guys done well? What have you, you know, still need to try to improve on as you, as you get into the last three games? Um, for us right now, we're, we're playing extremely hard. Um, and we got an offensive line that are playing extremely hard. They're playing through the whistle, um, finishing blocks, uh, doing all the right things. Uh, things we need to work on for sure is just communication when it gets to those uh, high stakes situations and, and critical errors in big time points in the game. You know what I mean? Uh, the the run game, sometimes it's been like one guy messing up, four guys doing the right thing. As, off, as an offensive line, you got to have four, five guys on the same page doing the right things every single time to, for the run game to be, be very good. So uh, just here and there, it's just one guy messing up and and it's just be creating some critical errors and critical times in the game. Get that to Saturday. What, what went? Obviously, you guys didn't run the ball yeah. as well as you normally do. What, what were the issues Saturday? Um, it was just yeah, it just came down to, uh, communication and critical errors. Like we come down to, like three plays where, where um, where one guy was messing up or one guy wasn't doing the right thing or one guy didn't have right, uh, the right discipline in that right uh, situation, that right play. So it, it looks bad on, and on when you see it, but it's really only one guy not doing the right thing. Uh, it could be the other guy like oh, what. Well, when we talk about the run game, it's not just the offensive line and running backs. It's the all 11. And like some guys might not run off, or, or we might have a right tackle miss, a, do an overstep on the technique, and guy beats him inside. Like it's really just one small thing. I mean, it was more like we beat ourselves more than they beat us in situations, in critical situations in the game. No, they're on front. I mean, that's Say again. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Another odd front. This is the fourth. Straight, you know, game that you got an odd front. What, yeah. what do you got to do to, to? I mean, obviously, uh, the Iowa State defense, Kansas State, um, Baylor runs an odd front. What, what do you, what do you see there? What do you got to do? Um, on that, I mean, I see that every single day. Our, our defense runs a, an odd front, so I kind of got, I got a bank rep to that. So it really, not changes doesn't really change for me. Like when we got an odd front, I was like, okay, this is the same thing I deal with every, practice every single day. Um, I mean, a little bit different is just the, the techniques on, like, lifts and stuff like that when I'm double teaming or stuff like that. But in pass pro, I'd rather somebody be right ahead of me than I have to uh, go side to side. So, I mean, I, I like it me personally for, for uh, to be out front because I get to at least wrestle with the guy and, and, and it's, uh, pass pro is a little more. Uh, had success against you guys. Success? I mean, I feel like teams would, I kind of like Iowa State, they would kind of, like, load the box. I mean, everybody knows that we're going to run the ball. We're pretty good at, uh, up front. Um, so the only way they can beat us is, is to either bring down the safety, bring an extra guy down. So, I mean, we, it was a couple of plays against uh, uh, Cincinnati where we had everybody blocked up, but the only person you had to beat was the safety. I mean, if we get our, our running backs on the safety, that's that's a good play. You know what I mean? But when they're feeling fast and they're not worried about the pass, then it's, just, it's really difficult on us. But at the same time, like, we still got to get five yards a time. Like, we still got to get push. So it's really it really doesn't matter if you load the box. You should be able to run the ball. a little bit more comfortable with him behind you? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, he had a little more confidence coming into this game, you know. Um, I mean, we still have our, our communication issues and stuff like that. But, yeah, he's definitely growing every single time he goes out there. And um, I think uh, in situations like that, those games where he – when Garrett's hurt, he comes in, he does a pretty good, pretty good job. I think coaches do a pretty good job with – I mean, it's a next man up mentality. Like, you look around, you see guys stepping up. And, um, you know, Huddy was down. Guys came, went, went out there and made some big-time catches. You know what I mean? So, uh, I think uh, our team, our, our culture is really really uh, predicated on uh, next man up type, type situations. Yeah. Happy, happy with your snaps on Saturday? Look pretty solid. Um, they was, they, they're, they're, yeah. they're better than they were in the last couple of weeks. Now, I, this week I felt a lot better with, with my grip and, and everything was going on well uh, body wise. So I felt a lot better with my snaps this week. And, you know, um, keep, I got to keep being consistent in that aspect. But I think it's gotten better this week for sure. I, I was going to ask about that. So, what did you do throughout the season maybe to clean that up after some yeah, yeah. early? Yeah, um, yeah. Beginning of the season, uh, things were going well, and then my uh, my snap hand got banged up a little bit, so it affected my grip a little bit, so I had to switch I had to switch the way I grabbed the ball. Um, and also, and after my hand started feeling better, I think the mental, mental aspects of uh, snap the ball got kind of um, – kind of got onto me because now everybody's watching it, everybody's focused on it. So now in my head, I'm like, okay, now I got to focus on it. You know what I mean? And um, so I, went, I, I talked to Dr. Sophia, our sports uh, psychologist, and just kind of just broke it down for me, made it simpler for me. And uh, we kind of talked throughout this whole last week and then went into snapping and just kind of just wanted to make it simple as possible. Um, and then I, I went out there and just did a lot, lot better job this week 
with the mental aspect of snapping the ball, just getting past that mental block after the Iowa State game. Um, yeah, and it changed up my grip a little bit, better on my hand. My hand got healthier, so everything was pretty much a lot better this week. Yeah, so you, you now feel 100% physical and mental snap-wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, I, feel, I feel a lot better. Yeah, I feel a lot better. Did it surprise you that even just this slight change in grip created what ended up being such a difference? Um, I mean, yeah, it's surprising because it's definitely like – as something like that, like you feel a little different. I would say, like if you, um, you feel different if you're. Well, what Dr. Sophia explained it to me is like when you drive a car, right? You don't think about driving a car, um, but when uh, you get in a situation where you might get in an accident, now you think about driving a car. Now ten to two, now I got to think. Oh, I got to turn a little bit, press the brake, and that's when things start getting. You start getting more accidents that way. When you think about one fluid motion, and just gripping and just doing and just doing the same thing I've been doing for a long time. I've been having the ball for a long time at this point, and just trying to just. Be consistent in that aspect, and 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 making my grip the way I'm feeling most comfortable. My hand feeling a lot stronger. I feel a lot, my grip got a little bit better, so it started to become a lot more fluid, and in my and the mental aspect got a little bit easier for me. In addition to talking to Dr. Sophia, did you talk to Zach Frazier or anybody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of guys reached out to me and gave me a lot of uh, advice. Zach definitely reached out and gave me some advice. Um, talked to a lot of coaches, and you know, what I mean, uh, watch. I watched a lot of film. Watched a lot of NFL guys. What guys do different. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can snap the ball. A lot of guys are doing a lot of th different things with grip and wise. So I just wanted to find something that was best for me. And I think this last game, I found something that was that fit me and fit my game, and, and, and definitely made it easier for me. You talked about, I mean, you spent the football as a, you spent all day out there drilling to, yeah. to get fundamentals down and the like. But you, you talked about having to go to the, not having to go, but going to the team psychologist to, yeah. to, to, to get the mental end of, of, of what? How did, how did it make it simpler? And, what, how does the mental part play into, you know, something that seems like should be road snapping the ball? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if people have heard of, like, what, yips? So, like, um, so like I was in the Iowa State game, like, people were telling me to get my snaps down, and I was like, I'm, I think I, in my head, I think I am. So, it was, I was like, I'm not, I feel like I am. I feel like I'm, feel like I'm, I'm, I'm choking down on it. But I, I, I just couldn't get past that mental aspect. And I was like, man. And then my hand was hurting. It was, it was just, it was, everything was, I mean, kind of like closing, the walls were closing down on me. So that, that became tough, and in my head, I'm like, man, like, why am I making it so complicated? The next week, I was just like, man, I'm making it. I feel like I'm making it way too complicated. I went to talk to Dr. I'm like, Dr. Sophia, I was like, hey, like, I feel like I'm making this way too complicated. I mean, I feel like I'm doing a little too much. I feel like I'm, I'm more worried about the snap, and I'm, I'm doing too much, and I'm snapping hot and, and high and, and doing all kinds of things. She was just like, you just, you're, you put, you put so much on your shoulders and too much weight on your shoulders, and, and um, you just need to understand, like, if you think about something like that, and Everybody's talking to you about it, outside forces and, and people with social media reaching out and saying this and the third about my snaps. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of weight on your shoulders and you start thinking about it a lot more. You just need to go out there and realize, like, it's, it's you snapping the ball and make it a one fluid motion. And before every snap, just think, of, think, of, think about some one, one word, like fluid, smooth, something just to really simplify the game for you and just make sure I stay calm, cool, and composed and don't let the outside factors uh, uh, come into my game and... and, and and mess me up and, and get me in a high anxiety situation where I do mess up the snaps, you know what I mean? Have you ever been a feeling that shoes added, added pressure to you in that, in that situation or were well, we past that? Say again? Uh, the fact that you were, you were filling Zach's shoes and obviously people were looking at, you know, this is a guy that has to fill that spot and then you start snapping the ball a little bit crazy. Yeah. Uh, did that add pressure to you or did you, or, or were you past that by then? Um, no, nah, it wasn't, it wasn't that, it was the, the main pressure was just, uh, I mean, I know that, I know I'm a lot better than that, so it wasn't my standard, so to me, it was really just, I was like, man, it's just, it's just not, it's not clicking for me, and, um, and I, in my brain, I was like, I, I gotta fix this, I put more pressure on myself more than anything else, and then the added pressure on top of it, I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I mean, only thing I could do was just, I just went in, and did as much work as possible to fix it as immediately as possible because, I mean, we don't have time to I have wait weeks and weeks and weeks to fix something like that. I wanted to fix it right then and there. So I went in there, and, and, and every single day I went to work, did extra snaps every day, open hours, just extra snaps after practice, did extra snaps, um, worked on stuff like that, put myself in high-pressure situations in practice so when I do in the game, get in the game, I do get better. Um, I feel like this last game I feel like I was in a lot better uh, space mentally and physically. Over top, you a lot of people think he's a first rounder. Yeah. Uh, how did you you fared against him Saturday? Yeah, um, I feel like I, I did a pretty good job. Uh, I contained him pretty well. I mean, he's a really he's a really good player. Um, credit to him. Like he came back from that blood clot, 
in his lung, and he came out there and um, did the best he can do. And he was, he's extremely he's, he's extremely strong player. Um, he's definitely an elite guy. I mean, he's going to do well in the NFL, um, super strong with his hands. I feel like I just did what I needed to do, what my team needed for me. Um, I just went out there, and, and um, I just wanted to go out there and do my job. Let's do my 111. Uh, everybody else has their job, and my job is to contain Dante Colon. And that was my that was my whole objective that day. And I did. I feel like I did a pretty good job. Boost to know that you held your own against a guy people think could be a first rounder. I mean, I was more boosted that we won. You know what I mean? And in, in, in a situation like that, I just wanted to. Uh, I wanted to win the game. I mean, uh, being Dante Colon and that snap doesn't really do much if we don't win the game. You know what I mean? Then the scouts are not like, oh, scouts don't really care about that. I, really, I, I care about if we win the game. And um, I just want to do my job. If my job was contained Dr. Colleone so we can win the game, that's what I, had, I needed to do. That's what, that's what I had to do. So. Earlier in the season when Co Coach even mentioned your hand injury that you talked about here, if you had to give it you know, 0 to 100% health-wise, where do you think you were at, at that point? Was there a hand – was that playing a role in it at all or was it more the mental? Uh, it was more like – I would say a little more of my grip. Like it, it would hurt. But I wouldn't say like I couldn't play. Like I'll still be able to block. I'll still be able to do the right things. But it was more like it affected my grip way. I, I had to tape it up. I did something completely different. Uh, I had to tape it up kind of weird. That, that I did tried it a couple of days before. I snapped pretty well with it, and then went in the game. I, I think it's just I just overcomplicated it and grip wise. And then people started telling me it got high. So I felt like I was trying to overcompensate with gripping it a little too hard, and I felt like I was throwing it back, and I was just. You shouldn't have been out there, or anything like that. Like, no, no. I, I was, I was, I was one hundred I was able to block. I was able to go out there and block and do the right things and and snap. I just need, I just need to get, I just didn't do the right things at the time. Um, you had a lot of people. It seems like really kind of circled around you to kind of help you kind of get over not just the physical but the mental. How nice was that? Because I mean, I'm sure that when you are in a position like that, a lot of times you kind of feel on an island. But it, it seems to me like there were a lot of people just like, not just the psychologist, but, you know, uh, Zach calls you, Zach talks you, coaches talk to you. There's a, it seemed there was a lot of really support backing you. How nice was that to have that so you didn't feel on an island, even yeah. though you, you, you might have had that risk of feeling? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really grateful to be the position I am. Uh, I mean, they know, they know I work hard, I do the right things. Um, they know I'm not going out there purposely trying to ruin the game stuff like that. So they went in there and they just kind of just circled around me like, hey, like we love you. Like you just keep out there playing. We're gonna keep. We're gonna work on these snaps. Um, they didn't discourage me at all. They didn't. And I mean, in film we talked about it. And for sure, but for sure they 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 cried around me. And it made me feel good. You know what I mean? Like when the, there was a lot of outside noise, a lot of things being said on social media, and um, a lot of things, a lot of articles being written. And and you know, just kind of just had to block it out. And coaches kind of went around me, all my teammates. And just like we just we went in there and just just couldn't just kind of fixed it, fixed it up. Um, I just felt a lot better about it, and I felt a lot happier having those guys supporting me. Um, and it's also like my it's my first year playing center fully. Um, it's a new position for me. I mean, it's gonna be growing pains, you know what I mean? And and um, they came around me, and it was like uh, we we understand. I mean, we understand what's, what's going on. Let's, get, let's fix it. Let's figure out different ways. Um, watch a whole bunch of different kind of videos and different kind of snaps and how NFL, NFL guys do it and. And Zach told me different grip things to do. So, I mean, it just it just felt good to have that that support system. Are there things a defense can do that totally eliminates the run game? I mean, you mentioned, hey, safety's coming down here and filling, guys spilling the outside. Does it get to a point where they may do something where you've got to throw it, or do you feel like there's always an answer somewhere in the run game, no, how, no matter how many guys they bring down? I mean, if you look, you look at our – our uh, start off the line. Like, I think we're the answer. You know what I mean? We are able to do things that other offensive lines can't do. I mean, we got Watt Malum on our side. We got Tomas Remack on our side. We got Jaquay Hubbard on our side. We got Nick Malone on our side. You know what I mean? I think that's the neutralizer. I think though we are the guys that can can elevate this run game. I mean, we shouldn't be the reason why our, why our run game is, isn't is doing the right things. You know what I mean? So I think there, there isn't a neutralizer. Like if, if you load the box, it shouldn't matter because we have our five guys. Like, Midway through the season, like we was number one off the line, and we're gonna continue to keep striving to be number one off the line in the country, go towards that Joe Moore Award. And I think we have the guys to do that, so we're gonna keep continuing to keep doing that. I don't think we have to pass the ball in situations. I think we should be able to run the ball every single time we get the ball. I, I need I need you to give me some perspective. You block the big guy in the middle. Yeah. Really. Put Moore in the game in perspective there, because he's made 13 tackles in that kind of position. Yeah. What, what kind of game is that for? 
defensive tackle. I mean, that's a huge game. Like, you don't ever hear, like, no scar making, like, 13 tackles. I mean, he does a pretty good thing. Like, me and him go back and forth in practice. And when we get after it, I, he helps me. I help him. And I think that really helped uh, both our games this week. I mean, when he go against Dante, I mean, I think Fatorm is probably one of the strongest guys I've, I've been against ever. And that, that helped me out this week to go against uh, Dante Colion. And I feel like um, – I, I went after him, and I blocked him pretty well for him to go out there and, and go get other other centers and, and do what he needs to do and use your strength and, and continue to be chasing the ball and doing high-effort things. But he's doing a really good job. What else is it with Torma that makes him that, makes him that effective to do that? Because you're going up against him one-on-one like you are. You, you mentioned the strength. Is there anything else that, that makes him stand out as a as – I mean, his strength, and he's just – like, he's a high IQ guy. Like, he's, he's smart. Um – and he just goes out there and does what he needs to do. He plays a lot of ball. You play a lot of ball like that, like you can figure out things a lot quicker than some guys haven't played as much. Um, he definitely has experience on the side. I mean, he's physical. Um, he just, he, I mean, he's going, he takes care of his body. I mean, he's just doing the right things right now at the right time.